results of millions of years of geologic activity make this part of a must-see area for an Oklahoma road trip. Wichita Mountains National Wildlife Refuge sits just northwest of the town of Lawton, Oklahoma. It was the first U.S. game and wildlife preserve set aside in 1901 by then President Teddy Roosevelt. So this is an interesting place where you can see these rift-related rocks um, being exposed. The refuge's unique geologic features provide a home to hundreds of native Oklahoma wildlife. All the tiny crevices and um, the large boulders provide wonderful habitat for reptiles and amphibians out here. There's about um, 55 different types of reptiles altogether, turtles, snakes, and lizards. Well everybody when they come they're going to look for the buffalo and most of the time they're going to see the buffalo. And west of the visitor center where we have a big prairie dog town. This prairie dog town comes with its own geologic landscaping large black boulders of gabbro. This gabbro, the oldest igneous rock in the Wichitas, is an iron and magnesium rich rock that formed deep within the earth and served as a geologic foundation for the area for the deposition of rhyolite and granite. We're on a particular granite called the Mount Scott granite. It's an interesting granite. It's named for, the, for Mount Scott itself. And it's a tabular sheet, or once was a tabular sheet that was on, 50, on the order of 50 kilometers long by about only about a half a kilometer thick and probably 15, 20 kilometers uh, wide. So you have kind of like a big pancake of uh, silicic liquid that was intruded right on top of a previously crystallized gabbro and under a cover, shallow cover of rhyolite that had come out earlier. So you got this sequence of uh, gabbro on the bottom granite, and then rhyolite. Geologists might consider the earth their oyster. I, on the other hand, consider the earth my nice chocolate cake. So this cake, if we assume it represents the earth, is similar in that if we take a cut through the middle and pie slice the thing open, what we see are many different layers. This is typical of what geologists see in the rock record. Much like the earth, a cake is formed from the bottom up. We put down the bottom layer first, the next layer second, the third layer third, and so on. And the layer on top and the icing is the last thing to go on. We call that in geology relative age dating. It gives us a way to understand the sequence of events that occurred in the rock record. In the case of the Wichita Mountains, there are many different layers of igneous rock. We've got a bottom layer of gabbro, which might be, oh, say this dark material in here. And then on top of that, we overlay a rhyolite, which let's say is this lighter material in here. What's interesting about the Wichita Mountains is a younger rock, in this case, the Mount Scott granite came in later and sort of <laughs> intruded its way in between the two layers, doming them up. So in this case, the rock in the middle is actually a little younger. Geologists have to very carefully work out the sequence of events in order to tell that this stuff in here is younger than the stuff above or below it. As we look at the mountains today, we see the rhyolite has been eroded away over time, and very little remains exposed in the Wichita. The contact between the pink and red granite and the black gabbro can be easily seen from the highest point in the park, Mount Scott. At Mount Scott, visitors can take a drive up to the top of the highest peak in the range in order to get an impressive view of the entire mountain chain. From there you can see how sedimentary rock, which is weaker and softer than the igneous rocks of the range, is slowly being eroded away, uncovering this ancient land. If we're looking for those kinds of contacts um, just regionally, you're gonna, usually there's, a, there are much more, there's much more vegetation and trees on the gabbro because it's a different chemical composition than on the granites or on the rhyolites. The Mount Scott granite is the most commonly encountered rock by park visitors. But with a sharp eye out, visitors may also see a rock more common on the volcanoes of Hawaii, dark colored basalt. Now we have basaltic dikes like this scattered throughout the Wichita's. And, and what this really helps us show is that even the, the youngest granites we have have some basaltic dikes cutting them. The mixture of dark basaltic igneous dikes and the light colored silica rich rocks such as granite, 
help geologists work out the sequence of events that reflect the beginnings of Oklahoma's stony foundation. Thank you.